All right. Hello, my beautiful sunshines out there. How is everyone doing? I hope everyone is having a great day. And before we get started with today's show, of course, I want to say thank you, thank you, thank you very much for taking a little bit of time out your day just to spend it with me. Of course, I'm your girl, Shayna, and welcome to Sunshine on wheels and today we have a very very special guest with us and without further ado because we got to get into this i want to say welcome to miss jordina how are you doing hello i'm good i'm good i'm doing fantastic awesome am i pronouncing your name correctly it's jordan jordan okay i do apologize for that That's okay. Now, let me reintroduce the guest, Miss Jordan. Yes, yes, yes. I'm glad, like I said earlier, I'm glad to have you on the show. And let's get started with some things here. All right. For those that do not know you, please introduce yourself, where are you from, uh, and a whole lot more. So go ahead and introduce yourself. Okay. Well, I am Jordan. I'm 37 years old. I live in Colorado. Um, I'm in a wheelchair. I'm a quad. I had an accident back in 2003, so it's been 18 years for me. So a long time, but life is great and beautiful and good. Hey, that's what I'm talking about. I like that. Awesome. And when you say that you had an accident, do you mind sharing what happened with the accident? I um, fell asleep driving my car. Okay. okay. Yeah, I was almost home, going way too fast on the interstate, and yeah, fell asleep. Okay. All right. So, for while you were dying after falling asleep at the wheel, sometimes it happens. You get tired. You we may not get enough rest when we need to do so, and sometimes things just happen. Now, for you, when your injury occurred, how did you feel? Were you in that? Well, I know for me, although I wasn't born with my disability, it came later on in life for me. After I gave birth to my daughter, I was diagnosed with a muscle disease called polymyositis. So it causes my muscles to slowly deteriorate. Oh, so wow. I went from an able-bodied person to after a while having to be put in a wheelchair, not able to lift my hand, arms and things like that. But for you... How did that make you feel? Because I know for me, I had a pity party. I tell you. Well, yeah, I mean, it was instant and I pretty much lost my entire life. You know, I lost everything in it. You know, I can't move my arms or my legs. So I had to relearn how to live life over again a different way. And at first it was very, very difficult, very difficult. Um, you know, people ask me all the time, how do you get used to not move your body? And you, you just kind of take it one day at a time. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it, it was tragic, but I spent a lot of time sitting outside and thinking. I mean, a lot of time right after my accident happened and trying to figure out life and what I was going to do next and how I was going to handle everything. And yeah, it was, it was rough, but I wouldn't be here today and who I am without it. So. Absolutely. You know what? I agree with you 100%. Sometimes when we go through those rough patches in life, it creates something in us that's totally different. It makes us more stronger. We're able to handle more than what we think we can handle and sometimes it teaches us to be okay with where we're at because it could be a lot worse. It could be more worse than what it is. So just be okay where you at. I tell you, it's a huge adjustment, isn't it? Yeah, it definitely is. But you have to look at your circumstances and either choose happiness or not. So, yeah. But now I have to ask you. How did you prepare yourself physically and emotionally? Because I know for me, I was an emotional wreck. I cried every day. Yeah, I cried a lot too. Um, it just goes with that, you know, when I was at Craig Hospital in Denver and 
they're teaching you how to live this way and what things to do and what things to keep yourself healthy. And I really, at that time, I was on a ventilator, so I really struggled. Well, I didn't necessarily struggle, but I really had the drive and determination to get off of it because there was no way I was going to live my life like that. So um, I ended up getting off the ventilator, which was amazing because they said I never would, which they always have to tell you that. Okay. um, When it comes to like therapy, they didn't really do therapy with me. I pretty much got screwed over there. Mm. Um, They didn't work out my arms and they didn't say like, oh, well, let's see if you could move this muscle and do this or do that. They didn't do that. They were just like, this is the way you are and this is how you're going to live your life. So that was hard itself. Um, So when I got home and got settled into my new life, that's when even more of it hit, you know, Mm -hmm. that I'm not in the hospital anymore. This is reality and I can't move my body. So what am I going to do? Mm-hmm. Um, I think that that meditating that I did really helped strengthen my mental state okay. with it all. I mean, yeah, I spent my twenties drunk a lot cause that's how I coped with it. Right. Right. Um, you know, it, it didn't come easy. And then I just decided to go back to school and figure out what I could do. Mm-hmm. And I did. So even with, not being able to move my body, I am still, still going strong and successful. So, you know what? And what I love, Jordina, is that you were able to pick up all the pieces that had been scattered everywhere. Some yeah. over to your right, some over to your left, some all the way behind you. Yeah. But you were able to pick up all those pieces and put them together and find your purpose in life. Yep. Well, that's amazing because I'm I, I'm I'm gonna tell you I'm still struggling with that finding my purpose. I like this, I like that, I do this and I do that, but yet I still really don't know my purpose. And for you to go through what you've been through, and for the hospital to sit there and say this is just it, this is what your life is going to be. So we're not going to do anything else, but just let you be. You come home. You have that rough patch, but you decide that you're going to become more. Yep. You're going to do more. And you decided to become a teacher. Yes. So what made you want to become a teacher? How did that come into play? So when I was 18, when my accident happened and I just graduated high school, well, my senior year, I had taken a class of early childhood education. Okay. I was in a preschool setting and I got to learn all about that stuff. So after my accident happened, I said, why not? Why can't I do this still? Why can't I still teach kids? Even though I can't help them with everything, Mm -hmm. I can still be there, be present and teach them and help them learn new things. And so that's why I decided to go back to college and get my degree in early childhood education. So I have preschoolers every day. They are a lot to handle sometimes. (laughs) But I think that it's great that they have a teacher who's in a wheelchair so that they can see that everybody is the same. We all might just have something different about us, but we are still the same. Thank you. That's what I like right there. You, you, You help educate in the younger ones. So when they grow up and if they come across someone that may be in a wheelchair, they already know it's okay. It's nothing wrong. We are all normal, whatever that may be. We are all human and it's okay to be in a wheelchair. So I think that's a very great thing you're doing. Not only that you're educating the children, but you're also teaching them that it's okay to know someone that may be in a wheelchair or to know someone that may look a little different than you. It's okay. I like it a lot. I like it. Yeah. They come up to me. They give me hugs when I get there. They, they're they're pretty amazing really, even on their bad days. (laughs) (laughs) 
Well, you just got to love them, but I bet you they keep you going. Oh, yes, they do. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. So has there been a time in, the li in your life, well, you did explain that you had that patch where you were angry and you were mad. And at that time, you didn't know how to cope, but you just turned to drinking as a way of coping with what you were going through. How did you overcome the drinking? Oh, uh, I think I just got tired of it. Honestly, mm -hmm. I think my body, I listened to my body a lot. Okay. And I think my body just told me this is, I can't do this anymore. But, you know, I'd wake up in the middle of the night with my heart racing from the alcohol. And I just, my body basically told me to stop. And I was also getting close to being done with my degree. Okay. And, um, yeah, so trying to find a job and all that. So things had to change. Hmm. That's right. And you know what? I like how you kept going. You kept fighting. And you, like you say, you listen to your body to know that it has to stop. And I'm getting ready to embark on something new and different. And I can't, you know, have the old mixing with the new because I want to become something. I want to do something yeah. better. Than where exactly. I'm at. Exactly. Oh. I wanted more for my life. I wanted to be successful. I wanted to prove to everybody around me that I could do this and that I could financially support myself. And that was a lot of it too. Yeah. You. Hey. So, but doesn't it feel good to know that you you're independent in some ways? You're able to yeah. make your own money and you don't have to have the government telling you you can't make this. You're making too much there, but doesn't it feel good to have that independency? It feels great because out of everything, I want to be as independent as possible. Wow. Now, before we go further, what can you say to someone out there that may be afraid to become, you know, more independent? What can you tell them while living with their disability? What could you share with them to let them know it's nothing wrong with being, you know, more independent? We can you can do it. I think a lot of it is getting over that fear, and a lot of it is wanting to take control of your own life. Um, let's see, I lived with my dad and stepmom for eight years, and then I moved to Denver, which is four hours away. Really, with a boyfriend at the time, and it was horrible, mm -hmm. horrible, horrible. I had a lot of panic attacks. I had a lot of anxiety. Um, after him and I split up, I lived by myself in an apartment with just caregivers. Okay. And it was terrifying. <laughs> but I'm so glad that I did it and I got over those fears and through those fears. Because now I know that I'm capable of anything. Mm. You really just have to push yourself out of that comfort zone to get anywhere you really want in life. Well, you just told me, you just gave me some good advice. I'm one, I'm one of those people that's afraid to step, I can step out of the comfort zone in some things, but not a lot of things. And I think I'm that type of person is, I gotta see it in order to believe it. And you are showing me that it can be done. And I yeah. love that, I love it. I mean, really, you don't get anywhere in life if you don't take that leap of faith. Hmm. So. Yeah. Oh, you talking to me? Damn. If, I think that question was for me. <laughs> Maybe. I think it was for me. Maybe somebody else can grab it and hold on to it. But I think I grabbed that one for me. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now. Since you have, you know, have your disability now, has there been a time where you were treated differently, discriminated against, or, you know, hatred towards you because you were in a wheelchair? Oh, yeah, all the time. I think that's just common, which is stupid. But, I mean, you know, anytime I go to a salon and get my nails done, they look at me like, why are you even here? And getting told that I'm too difficult to do my nails. And I look at them and I'm like, yeah, and your point is do it. I'm paying you. Like, yes. Yeah. 
yeah, so many places like that have. So. Well, because I was, okay, I, I'm a little stalkerish ish So with my guests that's coming on the show, I go through and look at things, you know, so I can be able to relate and have some other things to talk about with you. Yeah. And I saw that you posted that, that you went to the nail salon and they were complaining you wanted French tips and they were complaining that they can't do that. And, yeah. and, I'm, and I'm with you on that one. So, and I'm paying you. What's wrong with it? Yeah. Wow. And that's if I could show you my hands, I would, because I got them done. That's right. That's right. Sometimes we got to demand things to be done. Yep. It's, it's sad, but we do. We have to fight for ourselves. Yes. Yes. And I mean, if, and especially if I feel sorry for those that are, aren't able to speak up for themselves. And that's why they need more advocates to do so. Yep. But it's sometimes you just have to advocate for yourself. Yeah. And, and don't back down and don't be afraid and don't take no for an answer. Nope. And through all of that, that I posted that and that happened, a really nice girl in town reached out to me and she was like, let me do your nails. I'll show you good treatment and what needs to happen. And I was like, awesome. So I went to her on Friday and it was great. See, it, there you go. I tell you, you post it. You'll get some something out of it. That's right. And you see that you you met a friend. Now you have someone that can give you your manny and patty and don't complain about it. And is willing to take the time out to help pamper you and make you look good. Yeah. We need a lot more people like that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yes. The sh it's a nerve of them. If I'm paying my money just like any other person, why do I have to be treated different? Sorry, the dog. Rocco. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> That's okay. Now, <laughs> your support system. Who is that, you know, who is that support system? Who is those people or that person you have that you can depend on because having support is very important. That is uh, like 90% of it is having that support system. Um, I know so many people who struggle and they don't have anybody to help them. And I think that's where a lot of people don't get anywhere because they don't have that support system. I have always had my family, always. They've always been beside me. They take me everywhere. They We go on adventures. We do things together. Um, my mom and I are super, super close. She takes care of me on the weekends. And um, I have amazing caregivers that stay with me for years. And we become friends. And I think that all of that is just so, so important to have. Yes, yes, yes. But you know, um, have you ever experienced having um caregiver shortage and things like that? Because I know here in the state of Merley, we have a lot of that going on where it's hard to even get reliable caregivers. Oh wow, I have not ran into that. Wow. So it's lucky over here. Yes, because I've had um some experience with caregivers where I had one that was actually using drugs and she had to get tested. Yes. And then she couldn't come back because her test results came back negative. And then I've also had one who was actually a criminal. I actually did my own background check and wow. she was actually working for her aunt and her aunt had her to come here while she was going to another client's home. So the aunt was working for more than one agency and she was having her niece and daughter to go off and do work in other people's homes like they were her, but it really wasn't the case at all. And come to find out, I had a criminal in here that was going to court for um, credit card fraud, um, checks and things like that, writing bad checks, taking checks and things like that. Yeah. I've had that here. So that's why I asked, have you had any bad experience with caregivers? No, I really haven't. Um, well, I guess a couple times, but it wasn't that bad. Like, mm -hmm. um, 
when I lived in Denver, mm-hmm. I had one that was texting another one and just like giving her a really hard time. And she was like, Hey, she's, you know, talking crap about me to me. And I looked, I'm sitting right there with her and I'm like, why are you texting this girl? She's like, I'm going to stop. And she can continue to do it. So I was like, Oh, you're gone. I'm not dealing with that. There you go. That's right. Uh, That's- and then I had another one that it was through a friendship and she was mad about something and didn't want to get me up and stuff. And, was like, I'm not going to put lotion on you. You don't deserve it. And I was like, get out of my house then. (laughs) That's right. And I love this. You're not taking any crap off of anyone. No, no, I don't. That's right. Now, my sunshines, we got to be more like that. Don't take any crap off of anyone. Just because you're living with a disability, you may be in a wheelchair or you may not be. But do not allow anyone to take advantage of you. Don't allow anyone to treat you any kind of way because they feel as though that you may be less than what you're not. So stand up for yourself and let it be known that you have a voice as well. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Now, after going through everything you've been through, you came out on top your teacher, what would you tell your younger self today? Oh, man. (laughs) Take your time. That anything is possible if you put your mind to it and you really want it. Hmm. I mean, dreams don't work unless you do. You have to put in the effort. You have to put in the work. You can get anywhere you want to be if you do those things. Okay. Wow. That, that's what I'm talking about. You didn't share something great with me too. <laughs> yes, that's what I'm talking about. Never give up. Although life may throw you a curveball, but never give up. Just stick it out and see what happens next. Now, before we go any further in the show, we have some comments here and I want to read them out. Yes, we had Miss Cindy who says, hi there. Hi, Miss Cindy. And we have Tiffany who says, hello, beautiful women. Woman, I'm a quadriplegic woman. So proud of you. Absolutely. Thank you, Tiffany. Absolutely. And we have here Miss Jacqueline who says, hey, hey, how are you doing? And then we have Miss Josie who says, hi. Hi, Miss Josie. And we have Miss Cindy who says here, that's great. With you being independent and doing things for yourself, that is awesome. It is truly awesome. Absolutely. And then we had Miss Tari who says, kids are open. I was a teacher before I was injured and went back to teaching. I came on a little late. Do you live in Colorado? <laughs> yes, I do in Grand Junction on the west side in the desert. <laughs> Awesome. And then we have Miss Cindy who says that little kids can see a disabled person early in their life. Yes. And Miss Cindy also says, shares with me, Shana, now you know if she can do it, so can you. I'll take it, Miss Cindy. You got that one right. And then we have Bianca here who says, that's right, Shana, you are speaking real facts today. All right, we'll take it and run. No, Jordan is speaking real fact today. She putting a little pep in my step. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. So now we know that you are an amazing teacher. Thank you. You love what you do. What about this entrepreneurship? What when did that come about? Why did you want to go off and branch off and now do something else? Why how did it come about? Okay, well, teaching, you don't make a whole lot of money, for one. And I want better for myself in my life. Um, Two, I saw opportunities of working from home. Mm -hmm. Those of us in wheelchairs can't just go get a job anywhere and work. So I saw the opportunity to work from your phone. I absolutely love fashion. I always wanted to be a model when I was younger. So... um, I found Closet Candy and I signed up and it is so much fun. 
I get to sell clothes. I get to help people feel their best. And I absolutely love it. Okay, awesome. Now, we know you have a boutique. That is the boutique. Okay, and that is the boutique. So I want to know, do you think eventually one day you may want to branch off and be in a store, you know, buy items? Do you think one day? Here's my goal. I am already in the process of starting my own clothing line. Really? For adaptable clothing for those of us with disabilities. Mm -hmm. Which so. is really needed out here in the world. And we yeah. can be fashionable too. And with our adaptive wear, we don't have too much of that. No, we don't. There's a lot more coming out. Like Target has some and JCPenney's has some and Kohl's has some. And then you have Tommy Hilfiger, but... I know that Target's not too expensive, but I noticed a lot of that when I've looked at it. It's so expensive. Like, I'm not going to pay $135 for a pair of jeans because they're adapted. Like, I, like, we don't have that kind of money. You live off of Social Security. Like, you can't, you can't buy those. It's just impossible. You know, and they don't think about that. You bring up a good point. As far as the clothing being expensive, but not only that, like the vehicles that some of us may need, especially if you live in an area that you can't have transportation when you need it. But yep. the vehicles that they have for us in our community are so expensive. And how yeah. do you expect us to pay that when we don't even make nowhere near it? Yeah, so it's actually get it. Yeah, it's crazy. They just want us to live in our homes and do nothing and be nothing. And I am not going to do that. So I am reaching out and I am standing out and I am going on my own path to help other people not have to live on the system alone. That's right. That's what I'm talking about. We need more motivation and we need more push in that direction. Because yeah. like you say, they expect us, I guess, to sit around do nothing, hopefully kick the bucket where they don't have to give out any more money because we're no longer here. I guess it's a, I guess they're trying to kill us off fast, but it's very slowly. That's right. for sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. But you know what? I love that you keep on going. I love that you're not allowing your situation, what you're going through to stop you from moving on and doing things that makes you happy. Now, I noticed on your Facebook page that you went on a vacation. Share with us about that vacation and how was it? I haven't been on a vacation in my wheelchair. I want to know how was it? Well, I think the one you're talking about is when, oh, well, I don't know. I've done several. Um, okay. You went to the Caribbean's. Yes. And you want to go to Greece next, but you went to the Caribbean. So I was I went to Hawaii, actually, which is my dream place that I want to live. Okay. It's super stupid expensive, but mm -hmm. want to live there. So my mom and I and a caregiver took off and we went to Hawaii and it was the best trip I've ever been on. Flying with a wheelchair is difficult. Um, okay. I took my manual wheelchair and I just had somebody push me around the whole time because I wasn't going to risk my power chair getting damaged by the airlines. Yeah. We've heard so many horror stories about that. Mm -hmm. um, but we rented a shower chair while we were there and made sure we had an accessible room. Um, and we couldn't really find any accessible like tours. Mm -hmm. So we ended up, I found a lady with a van and so my mom and my caregiver would just put me in the seat and then we'd fold my chair up and put it in the back and we'd go on our tours. So it was private and it was fun and it was amazing. And you were able to be you and do something and be a, and be at a place where you love and wanted to go. That's amazing. And be out of my wheelchair. You know, sometimes we just need to get out of them. You know, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> feel the difference, you know, of just being more free. Absolutely. Absolutely. I agree with you 100%. Now I want to get into maybe some traveling. I want to do something now. Well, it's, 
it seems, uh, I don't know. I guess for me, I guess I put my own little barrier up. Like you can't do much. You can't go too many places because of your situation. So therefore just sit in the house and daydream about it. But now it's time I get out there and live it and do it. Life is worth living. No matter your situation, you only have one. Let's live it happy and fun. Yes. That's right. I'm liking that. And hey, we have a comment here. Miss Cindy says, they just don't realize that we can do more than just sit around and take up space. Yes. Whew. You can say that again, Miss Cindy. I tell you. And then also we have here, where there's a will, there's a way. It sure is. Yeah, absolutely. Now, you know what? I also found something on your page that I think it jumped out at me. And I just want to read it because you say wheelchair life. Life begins where, you, where your comfort zone ends. Do you ever feel like life will never get better and you are stuck in the same place? Challenge yourself to get out of your comfort zone. Do something that scares you. It looks scary than it is. Allow yourself to grow, learn something new, change your circumstances. Life is a choice. Has growth happened for you? Need help? Let's check. I love how you're willing to take the time out of your day to help someone that may feel as though that they're stuck and they're afraid to move on. And you're willing to take time out your day to let them know that it's okay and get out of that, you know, that zone that you're in. Yes, absolutely. Anytime, anytime. I am here to help people. Like I said, I want to help people get out of their sadness, their depression. I want people to live their life, lift themselves up, you know, get out of that funk and being poor and, mm -hmm. and everything, you know, so I'm here. You know what? I, I'm liking this, yes, because we have to realize that it's more to life than just being labeled as a person with a disability. We can do things just like any other person can. It may take us a little longer, but sometimes since we have wheels, we get there more faster than they do. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. So I don't have to walk. I just roll. So see you there. <laughs> you know what? I know I tell my I have a son and a daughter and I tell them all the time mm, I don't have to walk at all my feet never touches the ground and I'm glad about that one and they look at me and say nobody asked you I said but it's true I feel good you gotta walk but I get the roll I like it a lot that's funny so I tease them of course <laughs> now what has, you know, we had this COVID situation and I, I believe that it brought on, you know, other things within us. And then we may have found something about us that we didn't know. Throughout the whole COVID situation, what has it taught you? Um, well, my life never changed at all with COVID. Okay. I still had to go to work. My job was essential. Mm-hmm. I think really COVID just brought a lot of people arguing over it and not mm -hmm. wanting to, you know, do the regulations and stuff like that, really. I mean, I don't know. Absolutely. I agree with you 100%. Absolutely. Now, I wanted to know from you, it would if it was one thing in the world that you really 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 wanted to do and you really 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 want to do it now what is that thing besides being a, your business owner your boutique being independent what is that one other thing in the world that you really 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 want to have that i really want to have mm-hmm um financial freedom that sounds good to me you know what we all need that we all need that here absolutely but yeah. you know one thing for me that i really really want to have one day what? is a husband i can boss around 
<laughs> that's what I, I don't know how good that's going to work out. But yeah, I, I think I would want that one day. One day. No time yeah. soon, but one day. Yes. So what are some of the other things that you like doing on your free time? Um, I don't know. I don't do a whole lot. I watch some TV. Mm-hmm. I like to go outside unless it's too hot like today. Um, I'm going to hopefully go river rafting next month. So that'll be exciting. Okay. Have you ever been before? No. No? No. Cool. What are are the most outside of the box things have you ever done? Um, Well, let's just say my dad owns Cessna planes and he takes me flying. Really? Yeah. That's got to be cool. It is cool. Yeah. Awesome. I like that. I tell you, you get out there, you don't let any grass grow under your feet. You roll, and I'm loving it. Yes. Yes. Now, for all of those that may suffer with spinal cord injuries, what kind of encouragement would you like to share with them out there? Um, you know, you have to go through the grieving process. Grieving in any way is a process. Um, you totally lost your life. You know, your, your life is completely different. So you're gonna, you're gonna grieve that you're gonna miss everything you used to be able to do and want that again. Um, but I think once you're through with your grieving and being sad and, and finally wanting to do something and get your mind somewhere better. I think it's just a matter of your mindset. You know, you could read self-help books. You can listen to stuff. There's podcasts, you know, that can help just get you that positive, those positive words in your head so that you can transform your mind really. It's what it is. Mm -hmm. Yes. I agree with you 100%. You have to transform your mind and know that there's something better out there for you and it's coming you just gotta be able to stay there and work hard for it and know that it's coming yep yep now you are a fur mommy how does it feel to be a fur mommy (laughs) huh let's just say this dog is different than the last one Mm -hmm. he keeps me on my toes that's for sure he chews up my house but i still love him (laughs) And it's fun. Awesome. Awesome. Now, before we let you go, you live a very independent lifestyle, and I love that. And you have support, and you have caregivers that actually do their job, and they're not criminals, which is awesome. And you live, do you live by yourself? How how is it? It's amazing. It's for It's I love my alone time. A lot of people are scared to be alone, but I have my phone and that's my lifeline. So I just, I enjoy being alone sometimes and just not being around people who are, you know, always around. So (laughs) it's amazing. It's really amazing. So, okay, my sunshine, you head out there. We can live alone too. There's nothing wrong with it. Now we've learned today that we can be independent. As long as we fight for what we want, we can have it. We can live alone and we can do anything and have fun. And life is too short. And just don't sit around just because you live with a disability. Get up and move and do something. Yes. Yes. And don't take no for an answer. And if you're being discriminated against, God has sent someone else your way to pick up where those little slackers left off at. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. I'm loving it. I'm loving it. I'm loving it. Now, before I let you go, can you please share more about your boutique, how we can order and things like that, your social media pages? Please share all that information. Okay. So my boutique, I have a group. Um, If you just message me privately or hit me up on Facebook somehow, I can add you to my group. Um, that's where my link is to shop. I have new stuff every single day, except for the weekends. Um, it's so fun. I also have a group 
page, a Facebook page that is for my own personal website for my own clothing line that I just started. Um, I'm still waiting for my first batch of clothing to come in because of COVID. It made everything a lot later than it was supposed to. So I'm just waiting on that. But once I have that up on my website, I can have that getting going and stuff like that. So I am, I'm on Facebook. I'm on Instagram as well. So you can always find me. Yeah. Let me tell you something. You, you are a superwoman. Thank you. Yeah, you're a superwoman. I mean, you're a teacher, you're an entrepreneur, you have your own business. You live alone. You 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 live alone. You march to the beat of your own drum, and if don't yeah. nobody like it, you don't care because you're going to keep on swinging your hair. And I love every minute of it. Yeah, thank you, thank you so much. I love every minute of it. Now I know I said I was going to let you go, but can you please share with us? I'm for real. After this time, I'm for real. I'm going to let you go. I'm for real. But can you please share with us your experience of becoming Miss Wheelchair of Colorado? How was it? What did you do? How was it? Um, I heard about the program and I just thought, why not? I'm just going to go for it. And I just went for it and I ended up winning. And I was like, what? This is so weird. So it's all about the wheelchair pageants are all about advocacy okay. and what you are doing for your community. Um, so there's nothing on beauty. It's all about advocacy, which I think is amazing. Yes. So we get these girls, you know, you win, you get to live out your advocacy, whatever your platform was. Mine was making schools more accessible. Okay. Some of them just aren't. And um, yeah, and then we get to go to Miss Wheelchair America pageant. And that was challenging, but it was fun. Yeah, it, but it was... A great learning experience. You achieved something else up underneath of your superwoman cape. Yeah. You did it. So, hey, there's nothing wrong with that. I'm loving it. That's right. Do it. Do whatever you put your mind to. All I, right. Now, I know I said before, I'm going to let you go. Now, before I say goodbye. Please leave us with something encouraging to get us through the week. Let's see. I usually do Monday motivations live on Facebook. I haven't done them in a while, but I think the biggest thing is to evaluate your life. Evaluate where you're at, what's around you, what you are doing, who's around you. And if you want to change that, change it you have the mindset you have the control you have the power to change anything that is around you and in your life so go for the better because you can do it <laughs> yes awesome well i promise you that was it and i want to thank you thank you thank you very much for taking some time out of your day just to spend it with us. You are absolutely welcome. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. And you have a great one. I will. You too. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Bye. bye. <laughs> All right, my sunshines. I hope you enjoyed today's show. I know I sure did because she actually talked to me a whole lot and she gave me a lot of encouragement, especially for the things that's going on within my life right now and what I want to do and what I don't want to do. So she was very encouraging there. Please, 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 if you haven't checked out the show, you can go back and do the replay on, of course, YouTube, Life of Sunshine on Wheels, if you missed the show, or replay it back here on Facebook, as well as replay it on Sunshine on Wheels on Facebook. So please, please, please make sure you watch, share, tell a friend to tell a friend. And do not forget that next Saturday, it will be another show, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time here. I will have my guest Jamie back again, as well as her partner. And they're going to share a life of, you know, have been with someone that's an able body and someone that 
lives with a disability. So she's going to share that story with us. So please make sure you tune in next Saturday at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time right here with your girl. You all have be great, be safe, and enjoy the rest of your day. Once again, thank you. Take care. Bye.